Well, Taiwan and Somaliland just got diplomatic. That's what we're going to be talking about here. This story goes right here. Somaliland offers opens offices in <laughs> the diplomatically isolated Taiwan. That is such a loaded story. Who who wrote this? Johnson Lay. Let's see who is Johnson Lay. Because I'm just wondering. Somaliland opens office in diplomatically isolated Taiwan. It's like, well, no big deal, you know. It's just some backwater podunk place that no one's ever heard of, you know. Yeah, no, no. Johnson Lay, I have, uh, I don't know what that's the actual Johnson Lay of... Of, of note or not, but uh, at any rate, at any rate. At any rate, Somaliland opens offices in diplomatically isolated Taiwan. Wow. Just, wow. The breakaway territory, breakaway territory, see that breakaway territory? That is language of invalidation. Right there from the start. Breakaway is generally, like you say, the breakaway republic, uh, the rebellious, uh, un, 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 non-legitimate, non-internationally legitimate uh, place. The, the territory, territory. Well, okay, maybe they have to call it territory legally. I don't know. But the breakaway territory of Somaliland opened a representative office in Taipei on Wednesday in a move that has already drawn Beijing's ire. I guess so. I'm happy about it, though. Very happy about it. Subjectively speaking, from thousands of miles away. The territory's representative to Taipei, Mohamed Hagi, said trade, security, and development cooperation corporation were key aspects of this very special relationship. The two are members of the same community of democracies founded by our shared political and economic freedoms, as well as international values. Taiwan's, that was Hagee who said that, but he probably didn't speak like that. Taiwan's Foreign Minister Joshua, Joseph Wu said both faced external pressure but are proud of our sovereignty and ready to defend it. And what are we talking about? Somaliland here. Somaliland. See it right there? This whole region, by the way, you look up Somaliland and it just says, it goes to Somalia. See, Somaliland, Somalia won't even, won't even, dudes, it won't even. Somaliland is basically, I don't know how far Somaliland goes down, but I know this, this is definitely Somaliland, but beyond that, I'm not sure. Generally, Somaliland is, well, in essence, Somaliland, as we're calling it today. Somaliland is essentially the old, what was once the old, what was called the British Somaliland, and then Southern Somalia is the... Italian Somaliland, and then in 1960, they kind of brought them together, although there was this, this a bone of contention about whether Somaliland North was the one that was being recognized, and then somehow no, all of it was incorporated, and maybe there was a vote, and there was, I don't know, it's complicated, but uh, at any rate, after that, then they were the Republic of Somalia, and then in the 80s, then this uh, dude uh, took over, this bar guy took over and decided to uh, try to uh, micromanage society by killing most of it, and, well, maybe not most of it, but significant portions, including leveling some of its biggest cities. You know, uh, there was a civil war. He fell out of power in 91, and then we remember the whole Somalia world that emerged in the whole if you were ever an anarchist like I have been and, and I guess ideationally still am. Uh, you, you go through the whole if you don't like it here move to Somalia thing because everything's anarchy Somalia because Somalia is warlords and all that stuff. Well that's southern Somalia. Shortly after 1991 northern Somalia was doing just fine. Somaliland was reincorporated where it was doing its stuff. And uh, So now this is a bid for Somaliland to be recognized as a legitimate uh, uh, sovereign nation state and to no longer have to be shackled to Somalia. And Somalia is like, yo, man, there was these like treaties and legal things and clans and stuff. So, and then the Northern Somalilanders are like, yo, man, we remember Bar. And we're like, no, we don't want to be tied to that again. We don't want that thugism in our universe. We just, we just don't want it. 
There you see, Somaliland and Taiwan established di diplomatic ties. You see how different that one's written by? This is by The Economist. A hunt for recognition sometimes makes for strange bedfellows. One is a small, surprisingly successful and relatively democratic country bullied by a larger dictatorial neighbor which considers it to be part of its own territory. Pause. The other is Taiwan. Ha! <laughs> Nailed it! Very similar. Of course they're going to find each other. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Did we just become best friends? It's kind of like that. On September 9th, Somaliland, uh, a breakaway republic. There you go, breakaway republic. See, it's a breakaway republic is a little bit more respectable than breakaway territory. In the north of Somalia, opened a representative office in Taipei, the capital of Taiwan. It followed the opening in August of a similar Taiwanese office in Hargeisa, Somaliland's capital. The exchange of diplomatic relations is a coup for Somaliland, which declared independence in 1991 after the fall of Somalia's late last dictator, Siad Bar. Like Taiwan, it is a country in all but name. It has a government, an army, and borders. It holds elections, and unlike the rest of Somalia, it has been mostly peaceful for the past 30 years. It issues passports. Dude, I'm I want a passport from Somaliland. Yo, somebody hook me up, man. How do I get a Somaliland passport? Go to Somaliland. Visit Somaliland. I'll tell you what. I'll go to Somaliland and I'll introduce you guys to my... Uh, my, my I, have, I have ideas for how to build consensual type of uh, structures. Consensual type facilitating structures. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. So there you see Somaliland. It's... Uh, it's uh, a government of the de facto state of, I like that better, de facto state of Somalia is the way that I would refer to, to it as. And it's the successor state. Okay, there you go. Uh, British Somalia, right? And then here, here's this one I want. This one I want. Right here. Where, where's the... There we go. Alright. No music. No words so far. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Well, that was the uh, Casio 100 version of the song. So I, I mean you to dis disrespect my Somalilander friends. This is Long Life with Peace is the name of the song. Uh, Samo Kuwar. Samo Kuwar. Samo Kuwar. All right. There's this guy. This guy. This is uh, Major General Mohammed Siad Bar. I want to bring him up. Look, look at that right there. That's That's weird. What's up with that? What's up with that? Uh, under Bar reconstituted Somalia as a one-party Marxist-Leninist communist state, renaming the country the Somali Democratic Republic and adopting scientific socialism. I want to go on over here to scientific socialism. And uh, scientific socialism is a term coined in 1840 by Pierre Paul Joseph Peredon in his Property is Theft. Uh, I've read parts of that book just parts to mean a society ruled by a scientific government i.e. one whose sovereignty rests upon reason rather than sheer will thus in a given society the authority of man over man is inversely proportional to the stage of intellectual development which that society has reached see this the authority of man over man is inversely inversely proportional reverse to the stage of intellectual development to which that society has reached. In other words, it's intellectual development that will 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 shackle the brute. And the probable duration of that authority can be calculated from the more or less general desire for a true government, that is, for a scientific government. And just as the right of force and the right of artificial retreat before the steady advance of justice, it must finally be extinguished in equality. Equality, fraternité is where it all starts. That's where the French started saying fraternité, and I was like, "Hey, man, that, that works." Brotherhood. Yeah. So the sovereignty of the will yields to the sovereignty of the reason, and must at last be lost in scientific socialism. So that is, that is what Somalilanders are emerging from. 
just so you get a sense of uh and now this guy so we're gonna go back this guy killed like that that little uh that little mustache there you know that little similarity mustache guy killed i mean it's hard to tell maybe fifty thousand, probably minimal and maybe two hundred thousand somalis and he targeted targeted a particular uh a clan was it called the uh oh i forget what they're called let me do they have it in here anywhere wait where is it all right wait, him does it say it in here anywhere where you get the uh, clanism? Okay. And uh, who, 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 he was targeting uh, a group of, I forget the name of that. Uh, uh, the Asak, I think, is what it is. Never mind. All right, never mind. I don't see it. I think it's the Asak. Uh, let me see if this, if this has it anywhere. Scroll on down here real quick and see we've got history. Oh, history. I I've, I looked a little bit at their history before. I've been learning about the Somalilanders, studying them a little bit. And uh, they, they do intrigue me. And I'm going to get to why they intrigue me coming up here pretty soon here. So, so where are we going? Oh, here we go. Here we go. They do have it. Okay, here it is. It is the Asak. I was right. Ah, it's the Asak. I remembered it right. Yay, me. It's hard to remember things. It's just hard. So, so then you got uh, you got this old uh, this old dude right here. I guess he's not old. No, I mean he's old, oldish. You know, oldish. Twenty years older than me, sir. And I'm fifty-two, so you're seventy-two. Musa Bihi Abdi. This is the current president of Somaliland. He's been the president since December 2017. He was a former pilot in the Somali Air Force. He served under the Bar administration in the 70s. That was before all the stuff. He wasn't around. He wasn't serving in the Bar administration during the uh, the whole uh, that mustache really fits the, the man kind of thing. In 2010, B was appointed the chairman of the ruling Kumaye in the self-declared Republic of Somalia and the Kumaye. Also known as the Kumai is the current uh, ruling part of the Well, I know that. It was founded by Muhammad Mo Muhammad Muhammad. And I believe well, I guess it's really their their parties are basically like clans. They're not really there's no Republican or Democrat. There's no left or right. It's clan or clan. But the clans do have some well, I'll get to that. Uh, I went over to talk. Like, he made a little uh, reference to it in the first piece, the Star Tripping piece, which does not seem to like Somaliland. I'm just going to put it out there. Taiwan China diplomatic competition comes to Somaliland. Somaliland, a self declared independent region of Somalia and East Africa, has formally recognized Taiwan, another government that lacks United Nations recognition. The establishment of ties between the two self governing territories provides a boost to Taiwan, which for years has waged a losing battle against Beijing to win or maintain the diplomatic recognition of small nations. Taiwan's Foreign Minister Joseph Wu said in a statement on July 1 that the two governments had agreed to establish ties based on friendship and a shared commitment to common values of freedom, democracy, justice, and the rule of law. And they do have a lot of similarities. Taiwanese have a dot. They're, they're very, uh, I'll say very Americanized. They have a lot of uh, kind of a Bill of Rights-y kind of uh, values built into their government. And it makes sense. Well, I won't get into that. That's another story. But uh, uh, that, that is aligned with uh, the Somalilanders of the North. Not so much the South. Not so much the South. South, not so much. In the spirit of mutual assistance for mutual benefit, Taiwan and Somaliland will engage in cooperation in areas such as fisheries, agriculture, energy, mining, public health, education, and technology, Wu said. Should all be working on AIs, blockchains, uh, uh uh, quantum computers, encryption, 3D printing, microfactories, uh, microgrids. Empower all your people, man. This is what you should be doing. Bringing in these open source technologies and uh, get people uh, being able to build iPhones in their backyards. That's what I want to see. A world where you can build an iPhone in your backyard. So this is a tweet recently. Musa Bihi Abdi. Uh, so he's a tweeter. I did not know that. I won't judge you for that. I know you got to do what you got to do. Republic of Somaliland and its delegation are grateful for your warm welcome earlier in Taiwan. Excellency, as you expressed, the bilateral lateral relationship of Somaliland and Taiwan is built upon shared values and mutual respect. Our representative offices will be opened soon in Taiwan. And then Tsai Ing-wen says, it was a great pleasure to meet Somaliland foreign minister. Oh, wait a second. Uh, wait, is this not the... Wait, 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 wait,
foreign minister. Hagi Mohammed earlier this year. Taiwan and Somalia are building bilateral ties based on shared values, and we look forward to opening representative offices in both countries to expand mutually beneficial cooperation. I love that to say both countries. Countries! I'm for the smallness of countries and more and more of them, so I'm for a thousand gazillion countries. Even Somaliland eventually maybe being uh, maybe a federation of multiple countries, or a confederation rather, not a federation, confederation of multiple countries. And yeah, I like that idea. Lots of, uh, there's some confederalities of, uh, yeah, well, maybe some con small countries don't belong to a confederality, they're off on their own, whatever, you know, like the smaller the countries in general. Like get them down to like maybe 100 to 200,000 people, like those levels, like that's it. Oh, 102,000 people, hey, you're a country. Come up with a flag. Somaliland's peace, that's 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 a pipe dream. Shall, Somaliland's peace shall require a bottom-up approach in leadership. Somaliland's isolation by the international community is seen as a blessing in disguise for the country having afforded Somalilanders a level of self-determination in their peace-building process that was closed to other Somalis. At the same time, Somaliland's success in maintaining peace in a region bedeviled by conflicts is a result of the bottom-up approach of, at state building that derives its legitimacy from local clan elders and the local ownership of civil institutions, including stable economic, political, security, and social welfare institutions, according to international observers. Southern Somalilanders, Somaliers, they're, they, they, they have some, well, I'll get to that, never mind. Experts in inter international development, Kenneth C. Upsall and Sarah Phillips, separately agree that peace works because Somalilanders want it to work, and that because of the lack of policing capacity, the country runs on trust. Although it lacks international recognition, Somaliland is the lone example of a functioning sovereign state in the Horn. The unrecognized state of Somaliland has now functioned since 1991 as a self-sustaining state and has repeatedly received positive attention from the international media for the way it has embarked upon post-conflict reconstruction. Alrighty. Let's, let's shift gears a bit. <clears throat> We're in this universe here. Let's get this. Can we get this? I can't do that. Uh, there we go. That's about as big as I can get. All right. Ah. Uh, Zir. This is what we're talking about. This is, this, this helps explain a lot of what's going on. Zir is the traditional legal system of Somalia. Now, they're putting it to uh, Somalia, but uh, really, they should say that this is uh, this is throughout all of Somalia. But they're including northern Somalia in their e equation, as many well. Like, look at the map here. You go and look for Somaliland. It brings you. It just says all of Somalia. It doesn't give Somaliland its own space, even though really Somaliland is really formerly the the English Somaliland versus the Italian Somaliland. You, you think about the, you know, it's one thing I say about the English. I'll, I'll give the, the English this much. Now, I don't think it's because they're noble and good. I think they, they recognize the economy. They followed the Persian model of empire. And so they left a lot of local sovereignty and uh, a lot of uh, local customs largely intact, especially, 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 especially just outside the cities. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot more. Uh, I'll just say the Italians in the north, in the south, were a little bit, a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. Uh, anyway, no judgment, no judgment. Nation states are nation states. So Zir is the traditional legal system of Somalia and one of three systems from which formal Somali law draws its inspiration. The others being civil law and Islamic law. It is believed to predate Islam, although it was influenced by Islam and retains the faith elements. The proceedings under rule predate Islam. Under this system, elders, known as the Zir Begti, serve as mediator judges and help settle court cases, taking precedent and custom into account. Zir is polycentric in that different groups within Somali society have different interpretations of Zir. Zir, the traditional legal system, it is uh, not really 
I mean, it, I guess you could say it emerged as a system, but it's probably mostly not really been so much a system as more a custom, but a custom that's profoundly known, understood, and, and based upon what I would believe is a simple reality power. You kind of touched upon it earlier when you talk about the, the, uh, where is it? The, the, the fact that, uh, it, it lacks, uh, the policing. It's fundamentally, it lacks the policing power. You have people spread out, but they need to stay connected. And uh, so they still have to interact. So that that's why governance merges when people have to interact. But they have to interact in a way that uh, really pragmatically recognizes the reality of power, but uh, eventually will turn it into a moral construct that allows for the human to accept the limitations of their own power which is really hard for humans to do accepting uncertainty and limitation in general is really difficult so we come up with the we, we come up with our our moral vehicles of power and that's this is what zero is this is zero is this moral vehicle of power that allowed for the uh the creation of a code that could keep the peace without the ability for administrators to enforce it it has to be as self-enforcing as possible because in point of fact there was not going to be an administrator ever created to do the job so that created a necessity in general the uh the less capacity to administrate the the more the moral constructs of that uh place will will tend to reflect something that gives uh, more agency to the customized action of individuals based upon a based whatever moral code that is not strictly enforced and defined that's another part the strictly enforced and defined in general and this is one of the biggest lessons that you can get from looking at Somaliland and, and looking at anyone, anything, any faction, whatever, any, 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 anything that you want to assess in life that you might want to partner with or, or, or assess them as they're looking at you in some sort of less than welcoming way is the level of uh, claims of certainty that they have in the systems. The more certainty you have the more the administrative cost immediately because I can assure you anybody who claims certainty is lying because none of us possess it. And the minute that you claim certainty, the more power that you derive from that claim, the more you will have to conceal the truth of your lies. And when you claim certainty, you also have to claim, you have to, if you're going to claim certainty, you have to enforce certainty. The more, the higher the level of certainty to the claim, the more the in, the, the your, your audience needs to see the claim enforced if somebody violates it, which creates administration. So from this comes here. Now, whatever reason this comes from, I would imagine that many Somalilanders, and I'm, I, I do want to work on the possibility of having a Somalilander on the show. I talked about that in another show, and I've had said some feedback from some folks that said they're Somalilander. We're going to go through a process to try to, to vet people, figure out who's who, who who's really what, because just saying I'm from Somaliland. And, and also you have to have a good microphone. You need your good microphone, because if you can't have a good microphone, then I can't produce content people want to listen to anyway. But uh, I do would love to have a Somalilander on here and give some feedback and some of my assumptions. But my assumptions are there are probably some Somal Somalilanders who truly truly live the 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 zeer and may apply it to some ways maybe, maybe they they may absorb it all within their muslim faith i don't know the degree to which somalilanders are all muslim if they have muslim christian there's about four million in northern in in somaliland that we're talking about i don't know the breakdown but uh but really uh the the, the most important structures for them really are the 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 families the clans so so i want to little go a little bit uh and talk a little bit about uh how how they work so so let's talk about this part right here which i find well i find i'm going to show you something right after this within the, within this system only the victim or immediate family of a victim can bring criminal proceedings to zero mediation if the victim is a man his father brother or uncles can bring complaints forward if the victim is a woman complaints can be brought forward by the men in her family or the, her husband's family 
Only the victim or immediate family of a victim can bring criminal proceedings. You have to have stake. You have to have stake in the game. So that's just one little, 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 little thing that we're gonna gonna point here. And now, here's here's the next section here we're gonna get to here. And uh, in Zier, crimes are defined in terms of being transgressions against property rights. Justice is derived from in the form of material compensation to the victim. Now, this isn't exactly eye for an eye, but it's kind of sort of in that vein. Uh, if the accused is found guilty, some form of material restitution must be paid. If restitution cannot be given, a dia retribution is uh, uh, due. And that's a, that would, I, I think that's a, a Muslim uh, phrase, and I'm not sure what it means. Uh, dia. Let's get the dia. Let's get it. We got to We got to know what it means, because for reasons. The dia is an Islamic law. Is the financial compensation paid to the victim or heirs of a victim, and the, so they probably have some form, some uh, formula that they probably have to to figure that out. Measured in terms of livestock to be paid to the victim or victim's family. There's no concept of imprisonment under Zir. See that? So, but Zir gives you the moral justification for the limitations of your power to not be able to do that. But some people will probably truly own that morality and be that morality. Probably very few. Form follows function in general across humanity spheres. In some cases, elders may advise that neither side seeks retribution or uh, re restitution or retribution. Zier judges are made up of the heads of extended families. These family heads are chosen for their knowledge of law and wisdom, but otherwise there's no formal training. So they're looking for people who have demonstrated this throughout their lives. They have demonstrated the law. They've demonstrated wisdom. There's fruit. I mean, ostensibly. I don't know how it's actually lived out there. I don't know how it's just, okay, this one's got the biggest whatever's Whatever the biggest is for them that is the biggest. I have no idea. Multiple judges are chosen to provide over each case by the involved parties with the delegation being called an ergo. The number of judges, it's just, just, just so. So I want to get down to here a little bit to the principles of Seer. Different groups within Somali society undertake oral arguments with each other to define zero law. Despite this informal nature, there is a series of generally accepted principles, agreements, and ideas that constitute zero, referred to collectively as zisi ad kade. These are the payment of daya by the collective group, clan, subclan, lineage, or daya group, from which are an offender originates as compensation for the crimes of murder, bodily assault, theft, rape, and defamation of character given to the victim or victim's family. The protection of vulnerable or respected members of society such as the elderly, women, children, poets, poets, guests, and religious people. Oh, okay, this is good. I'm a poet, so I fit in, man. Fit into your society. Obligations to the family such as the payment of a dowry to a bride, the rights of a widow, the punishment for elopement. Okay, so that's not really in the principles there uh, of of the dia there, but there is a a part here, and I'm not sure if I missed it here. So Somali is structured around a clan base, subdivided into subclans, lineages, dias, groups bound together by family ties or contracts. Okay, here we go. Zero justice resolves around the latter crimes, as these are the smaller. In these groups, each member is responsible for the crimes of another. This is the part. This, each group is responsible for the crimes of another and must accordingly bear some fraction of any decided punishment. Within this system, only the victim or I me mean, now. Now, here, here's the thing. So, basically, your clan is responsible for your crimes. Everybody has to pay. So, if you pay the thing, the whole clan is paying the fine. So, what happens is there is this self-interest uh, in people governing one another. It's like, yo, dude, don't even, you're going to make me pay for that. That's not right. And then there is, you do that too many times, you get you know, ostracized. Now, when you live out in the world where you can just set somebody out and there's a desert and they're done, that's, uh, you can still, you can still do that today in, in Somaliland. That's still, you can, you can do that today. I don't know if they still do it today, but you certainly could, theoretically. Uh, but, uh, uh that is the fruit of, uh, the reality of power when you don't have the, the tools 
to docilize the people. You don't docilize the people. When you do, you do. So in northern Somaliland, the people have not been docilized, and the, there is no easy way for anybody of and there's and there's so much ideational constructs within them thanks to their particular interpretations and living outs of zir which is highly uh consensual in nature as you would be consensuality is the birth of uh mutual uh respect of of each other's worthlessness in essence that's what it really is you say worldliness i say worthlessness i recognize i am worthless and i need you and the other one saying the same thing. So it's mutual worthlessness. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's kind of mutual worthlessness. And in this sense, it's, it's worthlessness in the sense of worthless power. I cannot enforce any kind of rigid inter interpretation of anything on you. So, dude, this is the best we can do. And then that becomes more than that. Then it's possible the Somalilanders, they have this in them. These, these folks... You want you want to find a people that's ready made to maybe engage in a in an experiment with true non coercive enterprise type governance. Uh, it's it's the Northern Somalilanders, it's the Rajavans, it's others. But I mean, there's folks out there. But uh, but these folks, they have this zeer within them. And it's very similar to this. This well, not not all of zeer, just this one little element. The way their zeer justice works, it's it's very similar in principle to this. It's called Medieval Tidings. Medieval Tidings. <coughs> Following on from... Wow. Okay, so... The Tidings was the smallest and most... <coughs> and lowest unit of law enforcement in England. Every boy or man over 12 was supposed to be in a tithing. This was a group of 10 men, sometimes more, sometimes less. Together they were responsible for, produce, per, for producing one of their number if court required. If they could not produce it, they were fine. And the person they were supposed to bring to court would be outlawed now i'm just gonna say anything more there's a little bit more to this tithing which is that uh, in 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 not all instances because in in the case of england there were i believe examples where the tithing was the these uh were, these 10 boys it was it was the boys that were all put together early on and this was your group and your group, you're pretty much responsible for each other. And that kind of informally continued even after uh, into adulthood. You guys were kind of informally responsible for one another, including not not just being sure that you dragged them to court, but you could actually, just like with the uh, with the Zir, you, like, like th it's like they would create a, an instant clan, a guy clan, a boy clan. And uh, that boy clan was responsible for each other. And in in some instances also legally, like not just paying the you got to pay the fine, you'd have to serve the time, you had to do some stuff. So yeah, there was some high incentive for the boys to control one another. And and hey, that's what you do. This type now, I'm for these types of models of governance. Maybe not necessarily to the extreme that uh, the the folks in England may have took it, but uh, in general, the the zeer, I'm for creating conditions where that is necessary. Where the reality of power is such where individuals just can't be uh, so easily manipulated and controlled by central powers. And so we're going to have to come up with some sort of uh, moral justifications for the limitations of our power. And it will be some sort of uh, consensual philosophical construct that will allow us to be weak. That's what I'm for. That's what I'm all about. And with that, I think I'm going to say... Uh, this is the end of this presentation. Now, I knew in advance, by the way, that this was going to be half hour, 45 minutes. They're about saying this was going to be one of these long episodes. It's one of these that I've been waiting to do for a while and I haven't had the right story to talk about. But now this is pretty huge. Somaliland and Taiwan opening up diplomatic offices in one another's zones. This is a big old because uh, because China just wants to get everywhere and anywhere and anywhere in in Africa and it's like, it's it's just giving all these African nations all these bad loans and then I'm turning those loans basically into Chinese owned ports. That's all it's done. It just wants to litter Africa and I think in in some le eventually I I wouldn't be surprised in the back the Chinese state itself very very. Very, very very fascistic in nature i wouldn't be surprised if they're looking at africa someday to colonize it and get all them billions of chinese out in africa so they can split people up and not have all the people in one place and they can you know expand their empire 
I'm telling you, Africa, the Chinese are an invading force. Stick with stick with the Americans. We don't want to invade you. Uh, well, the Americans, unless we go down the route of uh, well, some, well, that's another story. At any rate, I'm going to end the story there. I do thank everybody for joining us here for Taiwan and Somaliland just got dramatic. You have a great rest of your day because why the friggin' frack knock?